Good afternoon to all of you. Um, in the beginning of this uh, session, one of the panelists asked me, you are going to talk about technique of injections, and then why is it the last talk? It should come in the beginning. I would say the answer to that is that in case of intravitreal injections, it is not the how to do it that is important. More important is when to do it and for what to do it and which injection to use. So we've talked about all that and now we'll go on to actually how to do it. So we are now talking about the most common intraocular surgical procedure that has overtaken cataract surgery in the last few years. And it is very important for you to have an informed consent about both the procedure and about the drug. So I'll go on to some of the general guidelines. Like I said before, the indication for the procedure should be very clear in your mind. For so what are you doing this injection? And before you embark on telling him that he's going to have, an, um, his, uh, before you plan the injection, you should assess for any risk factors. You can uh, please assess for all kinds of infections, ocular like sac or lid infections, any uncontrolled glaucoma, which should uh, affect the choice of drug as well as the procedure, and also the systemic control of the patient if he's diabetic, the metabolic control, and also look for any urinary or any other infections. Now we should remember that intravitreal injections are at risk for infection just like cataract surgery is. And unlike in Western countries where they can afford to carry on, carry on the injection in the clinic, we cannot do that in India with so much risk of infection. So we, it is better to do it in the, with all aseptic precautions in the OT. And you will clean the eye just like you do for cataract surgery with povidone iodine and use surface povidone iodine as well and drape the eye very uh, clearly. There is a controversy regarding use of perioperative antibiotics. Literature review does not show much evidence for use of perioperative antibiotics. We usually do it under topical procracane anesthesia, though you can use subconjunctival and subtenans if you wish to. The needle diameter that is used, anything between 27 and 32 gauge is fine, but uh, 30 gauge is the one we usually go with. And the angulation of entry into the vitreous is important to prevent vitreous wicking and reflux of medicine. A shallow angulation at the sclera and then directly into the vitreous is the best method. The site, it is important to measure the site of entry of your needle. 4 millimeter in phacic patients, 3.5 in pseudo phacic patients through the pars plana area. If you are repeating the injections, it is better to avoid the same site that you have used. Shift your needle a little bit if it is being done in the next month. And the injected volume should be limited up to 0.15 ml. And the drug is then gently injected into the mid vitreous cavity. The exact procedure is to have the patient to look 180 degree away from the injection site. Hold the syringe in your dominant hand and a Q-tip and do not, I repeat, do not touch the lid margin with your needle. That is the biggest source of infection that you're going to encounter during your injection. And do not move the needle while you're inside the eye or you will induce vitreous traction and retinal detachment. Inject at a steady speed and withdraw the needle also at a steady speed to avoid reflux. And after your injection, use your indirect and have a look at the optic nerve perfusion see that you have not raised the IOP enough to cause a pulsation at the optic disc. And post-operatively, reassure patients that they might see an air bubble and sometimes it may be the, they might see floaters because of the injection if you have given triamcinolone. And always explain the warning signs of end off and ask to report in case of pain or defective vision post-injection. I will not talk in detail about complications because that is the next talk. And we will go on to a short video. That is how the measurement is taken. Into the mid vitreous, do not uh, go anterior or you'll touch the lens and if you go posterior, you'll injure the retina and slowly and steadily withdraw the needle and apply pressure to close the site. So in conclusion, like all procedures, surgical procedures, there is a learning curve and you have to do the injection for the right indication following the right procedure and always in your mind, never ever think it is just an in uh, injection and go on casually about it. Take all precautions to give you the best result and your patient the best result. Thank you very much for your patient hearing.